It's a dangerous place to be on a combine, little kitty. Meet the Peterson family. Our dad, the three Peterson brothers, and our families farm together in central Kansas. Our family farm started in 1882 and has been raising cattle and crops ever since. Please subscribe to this channel and give us a like and a comment if you enjoy the video. All right, we got the 9770 fueled up. Uh, Dad and I replaced the part that came in uh, for the 9610. Um, we're getting, getting things rolling this morning. Okay, this is our smallest field of wheat. Uh, we cut two of our bigger fields yesterday. Still brought over two combines because it's bad luck to only take one combine somewhere. And it has two draws in it. Uh, they're kind of low money spots. Probably the most different thing about this combine was where the auger feed functions are. In that old 7720, the auger was right over here to the left of the seat. And as kids, we got to run the auger. Well, now we don't, we don't have that option anymore. All right, it's the next morning, Saturday. Uh, just went and finished drilling our last field of full season soybeans. Nathan almost got done last night. It was only about five, 10 acres that I finished. But I got it done and I'm bringing the drill back to the farm here. And uh, gonna get started cutting wheat soon. Hey, hey, it's Kaylin. It's a beautiful Saturday of wheat harvest. It's only a high of 98 today. It's been like 102 the past two days. So, you know, we'll take what we can get. Um, I'm delivering lunch to everybody. Got both girls loaded up. Um, I just baked a casserole I'd froze ahead. Super simple. I'm trying to find Nathan right now. I'm a little bit confused where he is, but hopefully I'll find him soon. My goal today is I'll try to get everybody to, you know, chit chat, answer a few questions while they're eating. We'll see if they're into it or not. I think I found Nathan. I was confused because here's all of his equipment. Where's Nathan? Can't find him. I'm pretty sure he's in that sprayer, hopefully. <laughs> he did not tell me that he was spraying. Update, it was him. Right whenever I pulled up and I was like, he's not here. I saw the sprayer coming down the road and I was like, hopefully that's him. I was hiding from you. Do you want any pop or Gatorade? I'll take what pop do you have? Mountain Dew or Dr. Pepper? Dr. Pepper this time. Oh, okay. Plot twist. Usually everybody picks Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew is oh. the best when it's hot, but I do like me some Dr. Pepper. Do you need water? I think like it'll go well with this. Okay. I got two jugs of water. So oh, good I job. Good. So, are you going to keep spraying or now you're planting? I, I'm just starting spraying. Oh. Hopefully, uh, it goes well. Who's going to plant? Maybe me, maybe Greg. Okay, after spring. Two sleepy girls. <laughs> All right, we're outlining a new field. And uh, if you remember from watching our videos last fall, uh, we chopped the Milo stubble off of this field and planted wheat in the same day, right before rain. It was a uh, definitely a success. I mean, this. This wheat is short, obviously, like like the rest of our wheat, um, but I think it's it's definitely going to yield good enough that it was worth our decision for sure. With the prices that they were in the fall uh, for wheat, and still is wheat is um, very it's a good price right now. So uh, we needed more wheat acres this fall because uh, we 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 were just kind of off in our rotation a little bit. And we don't normally um, plant wheat after Milo. It's not a great rotation, but uh, if you chop the Milo stubble off, it gives you a little better uh, chance. And, and we also planted a different variety. And um, yeah, like I said, I think it was the right decision. And um, that was a fun day that, that past, this past fall where we chopped all this and then planted it right to wheat and then it rained that next day. And so it's kind of fun to be here harvesting it here a few months later. Speaking of rotations, uh, 10 years ago, this field across the road that we just cut, and then that corn, that corn was where we filmed, uh, and I'm farming and I grow it, where Nathan goes, show it, show it, show it. Um, that, that was where we filmed that. And so a lot of the rotations this year are similar to what it was 10 years ago, 
when we made I'm Farming and I Grow It. It is the 10 year anniversary of I'm Farming and I Grow It here on June 25th. And so um, kind of a lot of uh, full circle things about that. Um, we've obviously grown up quite a bit since I'm Farming and I Grow It and um, since we started making YouTube videos. Uh, we have families now. Uh, we're all married, even our sister's married now, and uh, you know we're, we all have a much bigger role on the, the family farm, and our, our farm is, has grown quite a bit. Um, it's not the same farm it was 10 years ago. So just, just kind of cool to think about all the changes that have taken place. We are actually having a 10-year anniversary concert um, at our farm. It's actually going to be at my house um, in our wedding venue where we've got the 500 chairs. And, uh, and restrooms, facilities, and stuff. So if you're interested in driving to the middle of Kansas and seeing us perform all of our parodies and talk about how we got started and, and where we've been and everything and getting to meet us, um, that is going to be on July 2nd. And uh, there is an event on Facebook. You can learn more information. Just go to Facebook and search Peterson Farm Bros 10 year anniversary concert. So look forward to seeing some of you guys there. All right, we're on to our second field of the day. Uh, I'm making my out round. Greg led the way around. Uh, we got the, the spreaders on now. We're spreading the straw instead of dropping it to bale. All right, Kalen's here with the food. So Evan's over there bailing right, right across the road from us, the field we did yesterday. Greg, I'm not sure if he got his food before he started going around, but we kind of usually have one person eat who's running the grain car, and then they kind of trade off the combines, and that helps so you don't have to eat while combining so much. How hungry are you? I hear the kids are asleep. Yeah. I wish Worn out. Were. I wish Blake was awake, but it's fine. She's taking a little bit of an early nap. Do you want one or two breadsticks? Oh, I guess one for now, then I'll see how much casserole I eat. How is it? This is like Kendall's favorite casserole, so. I do love this stuff, it's good. It's literally like the easiest casserole ever. Do you... Hamburger, pepperonis, noodles. Yeah, how's it going? How's the wheat? Pretty good. We knocked out a field today. It was like, like a 15 acre field. Yeah, it's been going 45. really well the last two days. We waited on the grain carp, so I guess that's a preliminary yield estimate, but. Um, the bailing's going well. Both combines are rolling. Nathan's wife Riley made these super cute cookies for harvest. Uh, I would never, well, I couldn't make cookies that look that cute, so that's what I mean to say. Mm. Mm -hmm. Hi, Blair. You got Blair woke up and sauce had all over your cheeks. That's because her lunch was yummy. Mm. Oh, you're <laughs> wiping it around, huh? So, what are you going to drive now, Kendall? The grain cart. I so got fun. rotated out. <laughs> I had my nice morning with the new combine. It was nice. Woohoo! We knocked out that field quick. Oh, I think Ada's awake. Are you happy to see Daddy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bye. <laughs> Say we'll be back later. All right, I'm in the green cart here. Greg spinning around. He's heading my way. Uh, Dad just dumped on me, so. I uh, will get a look from Greg and then I'll dump it in that semi and see if I can fill it up. We are uh, on a 72-ish, like 72 acre field. Uh, we started, um, I actually don't know what the time is. I think, oh, uh, we started this field maybe like 12, 15 or something. So we'll see what time of the afternoon we get it. Well, hopefully get it knocked out. This field is starting to come up green, um, weeds and grass, and that was one thing we were worried about with this really thin, short wheat was um, losing it to weeds and grass, and that just causes a lot of issues. And I know there's other places in Kansas where where that has happened, but we're trying to get this weed off as quick as we can to avoid having it grow all up in green. So there's there's a rush to wheat harvest every year. Um, because the test weight drops, um, the quality drops. As soon as it get, gets ripe, that is the uh, premium time to harvest wheat. You don't want to wait any longer than you have to. 
But at the same time, this year, uh, when you're planting, you want to plant in the optimal window. And you want to make sure you plant early enough that the, the crop can reach its best potential. So there's a rush to plant. There's a rush to harvest wheat. And then after the wheat, we're going to plant a double crop. So there's a rush to do that as well. And that 12 inches of rain, I know I've said it a hundred times, but it pushed everything back and it's it's definitely made this wheat harvest a lot more stressful, especially those first couple days. And um, you know, it's it's not as, uh, it's hard, you can't focus on one thing. You gotta be doing a bunch of stuff at once. So we don't normally cut terraces out because we're gangster like that, but uh, uh, the weed is so short this year that uh, we're, we're cutting some terraces out because it's like almost impossible to get over the terrace um, with it that short. I mean, it, there's these, some of this weed is shorter than beans, and so it's it's a challenge, especially with these bigger headers. Well, we are narrowing up the field here a little bit. Should be done in an hour or so, maybe less. We. Uh, Nathan's father-in-law, Jamie, came out, and he's running the grain cart today, so we've been kind of rotating a bunch of people in and out of different things. Evan, uh, the neighbor, is still over there bailing somewhere. field. Uh, we are windrowing this stuff right back to it. Um, this field had manure on it and it's second year wheat so it is a lot thicker. Uh, I'm hoping that it yields a lot more as well. Um, so we're excited about that. I I kind of predicted uh, you know a month or two ago that I thought this would be our best yielding field of wheat so uh, I'm excited to see how it yields uh, based on how the uh, stuff that I wasn't as excited about yielded. I think this will yield really good. Probably about 50. This thicker wheat, we're actually uh, almost able to go faster through the field just because you don't have to worry about getting so close to the ground. This draper head's doing a really nice job of feeding it in really liking it so far okay we are loaded up and headed off with supper everything's gone a little wild right now one of the trucks has a flat tire and people have been moving around a lot trying to fix that and switch off who's going to the elevator so I'm not totally sure where people are but we're gonna go on an adventure to try to figure out where they are to deliver them their supper well we uh, ran into a rarity at least here on our farm um, both combines are full. You can't hardly, you can hardly see it from down here. And the grain cart's full. Uh, we've got one truck with flat tire. Another one. I think it's the heat that's doing it, maybe. I don't know. One truck with flat tire. One truck with engine problems. One truck is stuck at the elevator. So I'm going to go feed cattle. Uh, Nathan's, I think, done spraying, and so he might uh, come help. We're going to get started here again, but uh, it's kind of weird to shut everything down, but we're waiting on trucks. Okay, <laughs> we're at the field that they're cutting on, but not everybody's here. We did a little jogging around. We're just going to hang out here until everybody makes it back here because... I didn't know they were having trouble until I'd already loaded the girls up and I was like, we're going because we've already loaded everything and the kids. So we're just hanging out in the shade. It feels pretty nice. Blair, can you say hi? We're just hanging out in the shade. It feels pretty good. And hopefully they all come to eat soon. <laughs> it seems like they're solving the issues pretty quickly though with the trucks and um, should be back to cutting really soon. So overall it's going pretty well the last couple days, so. We'll take, are you looking for the food? Yeah. Yeah, are you hungry? Yeah. Okay, we can eat. And they're cutting again. So, got back going pretty quick. So, definitely very thankful that we solved the problem. Well, they're still working on the tire, but 
we got enough people back here and a truck to dump in. And so we're back to cutting while they're finishing the tire. But this is one of my favorite fields to bring food to because there's this, such this nice shady spot right over here to eat and to set up in. It feels great in the shade, so yay! Ooh. Was that grandma? Yeah, grandma took her food to go, huh? Yeah? You finally made it to the wheat field. Yes, I got the wheat field. Monday, I'm going to cut wheat. And do nothing else. else. <laughs> there you go. Good plan. <laughs> okay. You're going to have to film because my phone's out of battery. Ah, oh, look who it is. I made it. Blair, who is that? Yeah. You've been waiting for a tractor ride, huh? Mm hmm You're warm. Been out in the sun. Yeah. We're in the shade now though. Did you bring Pooh Bear? Yeah. Pooh Bear. Okay, so what's your plan for the rest of the oh. night? Where did she get oh that's a cookie? Yeah. I'm gonna check the Kenworth. <laughs> Don't wanna talk. Don't wanna talk with my mouth in front of thousands of people. <laughs> thousands. I'm gonna take the Kenworth to the elevator, uh -huh. come back, do chores, and then if they need the truck, I'll get it back to the field to fill it. Overall, but, how do you think today's gone? On a scale of one to 10? Beginning of the day went phenomenally well. Everything was rolling on all cylinders. Yeah. The middle of the day, all the trucks, um, how do I say it? They all had their own issues. <laughs> and then, now we're going again. So. Yay. Lots of meals on the go today to get the trucks filled into the elevator before dark. So, one more to deliver. Ah! Woo! Just got my workout in for the day. Didn't want to miss the green cart driver before it was done dumping. <laughs> I'm out of shape. Left Kindle on dad duty, and I am out of breath now. <laughs> but hey, all meals delivered for this beautiful harvest Saturday. So definitely thankful that tomorrow is Sunday and it's Father's Day. So that'll be fun. It'll be so good to rest for all of us and have time together as a family. Did you get some water, Blair? Yeah. All right. Set it down now. My job for today is done. Kind of. What about putting the kids to bed? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I just thought. <laughs> Worst part of harvest for me, doing bedtime by myself for... Every night. This will be my fifth. Hey, I was there. I just made it worse one night. Six, sixth night in a row by myself. <laughs> I came and helped and I made it worse because then Blair saw me and then wanted me to stay for longer. Yeah, well, that happens. Okay. Bye, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Blair, do you want to wave bye-bye? This way. Stuck her tongue. All right, so you can see we're going again, and I uh, actually had my uh, father-in-law come out, and uh, he's going to fly the drone and uh, film for me. In past years, I have flown the drone myself, whether that's when I'm running the grain cart or have some downtime, or sometimes I just fly it while I'm driving, which is a little, uh, little tough. And now with this, with this 35-foot header, it's going over terraces can't fly a drone at the same time but uh mark my father-in-law is going to fly and uh i think it's going to turn out pretty awesome with this uh, sunset and these hills behind us so hopefully you guys enjoy this drone video
added many clips of the elevator this harvest. I don't know if Greg has made very many trips in, and my mom's been doing a lot of loads, and even when I come in, I've been trading, or switching my mom up on the road. See, there's my mom right over there. Well, folks, we went from our best field to our worst field. It's only about a foot tall. A little rough. This is the effects of the drought over the winter. That last field was a wheat on wheat rotation, which uh, did really well this year. Some years it doesn't do as well. Um, this year definitely was the best best wheat we've had. Um, this was wheat after uh, soybeans, which usually does okay if it gets moisture. Those soybeans take all the moisture, and then you plant wheat right after that, and it's got to rain for the wheat to, to do well, and it did not rain here. Um, and I think this field got even less rain than like at my house. And so, uh, yeah, we're looking at 20 bushel per acre so far might get worse I don't know but again it's better than nothing hope you enjoyed that um, drone video my father-in-law took um, probably gonna have a few uh, comments that say why are your rows so crooked uh, why were you missing some wheat I'm sure it's gonna be hard in the to tell in the drone video but that was on like the um, there was a ton of terraces where we were cutting right there um, and it's just really hard to cut those straight. You kind of have to move out a little bit in order to get over them. And uh, the other thing is, a lot of farmers cut out their terraces. They don't try to go over them like that. Um, but when we are wind rowing straw to bale, we try to make it as easy as possible for the, the baler guy to to be able to follow the, ro the rows and you know the least amount of compaction possible because we're going to double crop all these wheat acres and so we don't want extra compaction if we don't have to have it and um, yeah that's pretty much the answer to those questions all right Kendall switched me off this is his field so uh, he wants to harvest it I'm sure Thanks for watching everyone. Check out our music videos linked in the description. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, and explore our website www.petersonfarmbrothers.com. See you guys next time.